Number seven, heat is released when some solutions form and heat is absorbed when other solutions form. Provide a molecular explanation for the difference between these two types of spontaneous processes. Okay, so it basically comes down to what's going on with the heat, right? Sometimes heat can be released or sometimes heat can be absorbed when we make reactions. And we've seen that, right? Whenever we're talking about heat, and maybe I'll say that heat is released and then released. And then on the bottom, I'm going to put heat is absorbed. Heat is absorbed. Okay. So when heat is being released, it is exiting the building, right? And if it's exiting, it is exothermic. Exothermic. So anytime that heat is released, this is an exothermic reaction versus when heat is being absorbed, it's being taken in, that's endo because you're keeping everything inside, endo, inside, endothermic. And in the scale of which one is more favorable, an exothermic reaction is always favorable than a endothermic reaction. So we'll say unfavorable. So it's better to let it all out, right? Let out your feelings. Don't keep everything pent up. Life lessons with Christina. <laughs> Unfavorable. So now we just have to explain why this is going on in terms of a molecular level. And we have to talk about it in solutions. Now just know that what makes up a solution is two components. A solution boils down to a solute and a solvent. Now there's three S words here, right? Solute, solvent, and solution. The easiest way to remember these is just to count the numbers, right? Count the numbers. <laughs> count the letters. In solute, there's six letters. In solvent, there's seven letters. And in solution, there are eight letters. So just go by the least to the most number. The smallest thing, the solute, is getting placed into the bigger thing, the solvent, and the combination of the solute coming together with the solvent makes a solution. Now, when we are dealing with this, right, we always have intermolecular forces. There's intermolecular forces in pure solutes by themselves, there are intermolecular forces in pure solvents just by themselves. And then when they come together to make a solution, they have their own intermolecular forces. And the more intermolecular forces, so I'll say the higher the intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces, the more stable um, a either a solute or a solvent or a solution is. Now, if we made a favorable reaction, we went from something that was less stable to more stable, right? If something is favorable in terms of chemistry, we never want high amounts of energy. We always want stability. So when you release that heat and it's an exothermic reaction, it's a favorable reaction, that means that you went from um, we'll say weaker bonds or weaker intermolecular forces. And maybe I'll just say I, usually they're uh, abbreviated by IMFs, intermolecular forces. So this in turn is that you went from weaker intermolecular forces to something that was more stable or stronger. Because the stronger or the more intermolecular forces means the more stability. So this means that when your solute and your solvent came together to make your solution, the solution's intermolecular forces were stronger than your pure solute and pure solvent before they came together. 
On the flip side, if we talk about heat was absorbed or an endothermic reaction, which is an unfavorable reaction, we're basically going the opposite way, where we had stronger intermolecular forces in the beginning. So stronger intermolecular forces, we broke them up and we formed weaker intermolecular forces. And that means that when we took that solute and came in with the solvent and made the solution, the solution has the weaker intermolecular forces. Because whenever you're talking about a solution, that always means that the solute and the solvent came together, whatever that was. So for this one, I guess we'll just say one more thing is that when you went from weaker intermolecular forces to stronger ones, the weaker ones were in the pure solute and pure solvent. But then when you mix them together to make the solution, uh, in this case, those made stronger intermolecular forces. But on the flip side, if you made an unfavorable reaction, the stronger intermolecular forces were in the pure solute by itself and the pure solvent. But then when you mix the two of them together and you made a solution, and unfortunately those are the weaker intermolecular forces, that's when heat is absorbed. And now I think I've gotten everything. And keep in mind, uh, these are two types of spontaneous processes because spontaneous reactions always correlate with a Gibbs free energy, delta G. And delta G, depending on what you know scenarios you have, you can have spontaneous reactions where heat is released and you could have spontaneous reactions where heat is absorbed because it has to take into consideration entropy and also the temperature. But in, in terms of this, we just went through, you know, exo and endothermic and then the intermolecular forces, but that's it. So everything that's written down here and what I went through, that's basically the answer to this problem. So I hope this helped you out. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I look forward to helping you in more questions and I will talk to you soon. Okie dokie. All right, bye-bye.